For more on this, I'm joined by Ben Rhodes, the former De Deputy National Security Advisor under President Barack Obama. Ben is an MSNBC political contributor and a co-host of the Pod Save the World podcast. Ben, uh, it's so hard to to address the numerous parts uh, of this, this unfolding crisis. But there are people in our government, it seems, who are thinking beyond the immediate, beyond today's opening of the Rafah border and the 20 trucks that went in and the 100 trucks a day that they're going to need, even beyond trying to avoid a ground war, into whether this can be made into an opportunity for some sort of durable peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Is there any sense of that being possible? I mean, right now, Ali looks more difficult than it has uh, in a very, very long time. Um, I think, though, when you talk about the shuttle diplomacy, there's the short term and then the long term issues. Uh, the short term issues are can we get hostages out? Can we get assistance in uh, across that border crossing? Can we send messages to Iran and its proxies like Hezbollah to stay out of this? That's all happening. The long term is what is the future of Gaza? Um, and I would think and hope that in conversations in the Gulf, where there are a lot of resources, uh, in Egypt, uh, where there's obviously proximity to Gaza, that there is a discussion about, if we all don't like Hamas, what is an alternative leadership structure that we can build up uh, that is good for the Palestinians, good for peace, um, and, and that might avoid this kind of spiral? The big question, though, Ali, as you alluded to, is whether or not there's a ground invasion. Because all those short-term initiatives of getting hostages out, getting aid in, I think all of those become much, much more complicated uh, in the aftermath of an Israeli ground invasion, uh, as do the, man the risk of managing escalation, um, and, and so do the, the challenges of discussing what happens the day after. So right now we're in this period where uh, everything is uh, awaiting what the Israeli decision is with respect to an invasion of Gaza. Right. And, and the context here is that Israel, on a daily basis, finds a new way of saying the ground invasion is imminent. Martin Fletcher, who is a longtime NBC correspondent, who's uh, the two women who were released yesterday are his relatives. He said when the shooting starts on the ground, the talking probably stops. But there was a the son of a, a woman who is believed to be held hostage, whom I interviewed when I was in Israel last week, uh, who said to me, if there is a successful negotiation for any of the hostages, which we have seen now, he says, I wonder if that sets the table for a breakthrough of some sorts, because we have seen until yesterday two weeks of nothing that looked remotely like a breakthrough. I don't want to be overly optimistic here, but does it tell us something that the United States and, and Qatar and Egypt and Israel were involved in a conversation that resulted in the release of just two hostages, but it was two more than we've had in the last two weeks? It tells you something. Um, I think in diplomacy, you are always looking for what we would call confidence-building measures. Can the party that you're negotiating with, even if you're negotiating through a proxy, right? So even with Hamas, I'm sure that it was the United States talking to Qatar and then probably Qatar talking to Hamas. Um, can the party do something that it says it's going to do? Um, and in this case, release a hostages. Uh, I would think that Hamas's approach to this would be potentially to try to release American hostages, or potentially to try to release uh, women and children, to try to engender some goodwill. Tragically, though, I think that they're probably going to retain a good number of hostages because they see that as some leverage. Um, as you mentioned, Ali, the, the moment a ground invasion begins, and we're talking about potential large-scale urban warfare uh, in an enclave of two million people, uh, with the IDF going house to house, block to block, the capacity to negotiate that kind of release it almost goes away. It becomes much, much more difficult. Um, and so that's why I think there's a degree of urgency about getting this done uh, now before you know that there's a potential ground invasion. Thus far, we also don't know that there's anything that the Palestinians could say, that Hamas could say, that Arab countries could say, that would affect Israel's decision making about whether or not to do that ground invasion. Right now, the United States is really the only country that I think Israel is consulting about these matters. Ultimately, Israel is going to make its own decisions. I guarantee you, Ali, that all those Arab leaders that talked to Tony Blinken told him to tell the Israelis that it would be disastrous if there's a ground invasion, that it'd be disastrous to the Palestinian people, and it'd be disastrous in terms of potential regional escalation and in terms of potential uprisings on their own uh, in their own public uh, publics as well. Um, so the U.S. kind of becomes a conduit for that kind of messaging as well. 
You know, Aaron David Miller, uh, who has worked for decades on this, you know him well, uh, on the Arab-Israeli peace process, ha has pointed out that in the end, um, it has suited at least Benjamin Netanyahu for a while to have, uh, you know, a disconnected Hamas and a, and a Palestinian authority. Uh, it's, a, it's a divide and conquer rule. At this point, the former negotiating partners of, uh, of Israel in, in that region of the world, the Palestinian Authority, um, is looking like a better bet. Is there some discussion, do you think, about either bringing, re-empowering the Palestinian Authority or finding a negotiating partner uh, for Israel for a more enduring peace? Yes. Uh, I'm sure that has to be a part of the discussion of the long-term solution. My view of this, Ali, is that you've had for years a situation where Hamas is entrenched in the Gaza Strip. The Palestinian Authority has been relentlessly kind of weakened, in part because the Israelis have not engaged in significant uh, talks uh, that would lead to a Palestinian state, in part because it's become a corrupt organization led by very old men. Uh, and so it's left this huge vacuum. Uh, and I think Hamas is trying to fill that vacuum with, with, with its actions. Um, I think right now the message to the region has to be, if you don't like Hamas, and none of those Arab leaders particularly like have any you know, any feeling of sympathy for Hamas, but you do support Palestinian aspirations and you do think that this issue should be dealt with and not avoided, as it was, frankly, being aborted, Ali, in all these normalization deals between Israel and Arab states that cut the Palestinians out. If you believe that, then you have to put your money where your mouth is. And there are a lot of resources in the Gulf, obviously, that could fund this in terms of building up an alternative leadership. And maybe that is through the Palestinian Authority, but it can't just be you know, writing some checks to uh, Mahmoud Abbas and Ramallah uh, that seem to not actually reach the Palestinian people. Uh, it has to be a bottom-up kind of effort that Israel is open to, that has as its endpoint a, a desired Palestinian state. Uh, and so that's why Israel has to be uh, open to this, too, and invested in it as well. That's the kind of long-term thinking, I think, that needs to be done here. Now, the scale of this ground invasion matters, because if 2 million people are displaced out of Gaza uh, and there's more permanent Palestinian refugees, then that window kind of closes uh, of its own accord, too. So Israel That's has right. a lot of agency here. Yeah, there's a very important issue there, that there may be a window. It doesn't look like it. It looks like there's nothing but clouds uh, above, but we may have an opportunity, and, and I hope people take it. Ben, as always, very grateful for your, your analysis. Ben Rhodes is a former deputy national security advisor during the Obama administration and an MSNBC political contributor.